It's funny, isn't it? In last week's really depressing review of our loss against the Adelaide Crows, and I was thinking about that loss on Friday night when I was watching the um, watching the game against Essendon and Adelaide, and thinking how poor Adelaide were. And I, I thought to myself on Friday night that the only way I could forgive us for losing that game would be to beat the Giants, um, which I consider to be a bit of an upset. We went into that game favourites, but I, I just didn't see it, um, that we could be favourites in that game on the weekend against the Giants. And I just thought to myself, fuck, and how did we drop that game against Adelaide? So this is, we have to win. All can be forgiven <laughs> for that Adelaide game if we can if we can get the job done against the Giants, and we did exactly that. But it's funny, isn't it? Like, the week before, I was so flat, and we did exactly the same thing. We got the train into the football, um, and then we we sung the song after the game and then walked to Southern Cross Station in that really busy concourse last week. And right at exactly the same time Sweet Caroline was playing last week, I said it was the worst fucking song I've ever heard in my life, biggest bogan song in the world. This time, oh, it was absolutely, absolutely glorious. So I'm, I'm glad if you uh, enjoyed that um, little snippet there and also the song after the game. Um, this was a wonderful win. It, it, felt, it felt very special and we've had, some, we've had some unbelievable wins over the last eight months or so. Um, we have, and maybe, maybe from my point of view, I'm not as trusting as a lot of other supporters. But every time we win in this manner, there's yeah, I just I, I just feel, I just feel like we are we are right on we are right on track um, with a fair bit of work to do still because um, we haven't reached that pinnacle just yet. But you have to have. You have to have this journey along the way. Um, but this wasn't just a, a win of grit, determination and, and guts and all those all those cliches, but they're, they're all true. Um, they're all true. But I think probably the, the Brisbane game, I, I don't want to undersell that Brisbane game now because I think that the what, the what happened in that game is as good as performances I've seen from a Carlton team in my lifetime. But... There was something about this win in regards to the manner in which we we changed the course of the game and were able to do that against a top quality opposition who are in really good form, really good form. Um, but it looked like it looked like at periods of time in that second quarter, definitely second quarter, and maybe early in the third, that their their efficiency, similar to what Adelaide, but this is a better team than Adelaide, their efficiency and the ease of which they were able to, at times, transition the ball and kick goals was going to get us. Um, and, and it felt like no matter how much we could dominate the clearances and, and have a dip and have a dip, it probably wasn't going to be enough in this game. And maybe, maybe class would just sort of take over. And I'm talking about overall ball movement class, not necessarily class forward of centre, um, you know, because we do have some firepower in our front half with Harry and Charlie, who were relatively well held in that first half against, um, geez, wasn't he Lee Kalir? Wasn't there something very sort of special and um, eye-catching about his performance in that first half? And the only way Harry could get involved in the game early, early was to get up the ground. He took some good contested marks up the ground, which would have given him a bit of confidence. Um, but he was all over him defensively. It's just some of his spoiling. And, and Charlie, although he left a few goals out there, it was more of an opportunist sort of game early for, for Charlie. Um, you know, he missed some shots on the run and around his body. You know, Buckley was, was doing a reasonable job on him. And it was almost like it was our lesser like forwards who were, who were keeping us keeping us in it, although our defensive pressure at times in our front half was, I wouldn't say non-existent, but a little bit down. But it just felt just felt in that first half and even early in the third that their, 
their ability just to score easily, easily on transition was was just going to be too too good for us. But I did I did mention I didn't feel like it never got out of hand, um, and I did feel somewhat confident because I I've watched the Giants pretty closely over the, the course of the year thus far, and I mentioned this in my preview. Um, although we were going to be up against it, I thought we were still capable. And I love the fact that Voss says it takes a squad to be able to get the job done. He never, this is before the game, he said this. He never once said that uh, would use personnel as an excuse. And so I, I, I don't think we should be in that situation now. But the fact that he said it takes a squad to be able to get the job done, it gave, I suppose, a sense of belief to all these players that they were never going to be out of this unless the scoreboard got really out of a hand. And it never did. And what the Giants have done so far this year, in pretty much every game, but I'm not going to go through every game, but you can go back to the week before against St Kilda. And how poor are the Saints at the moment? You know, They led them back into that game with, I think they kicked seven unanswered goals to nearly snatch that game in Canberra. Um, so there was this sense of hope, and I didn't. I thought we were doing so many things well, um, even though the Giants were scoring with ease. You know, just our, our, our. I've never seen a team dominate clearances, particularly out of the middle, like we did in that game. And I was just, I was just sort of thinking to myself, shit, we just look, we look dominant in this part of the game, but it's just not, it's just not showing. Um, and if we could somehow, somehow, and it was somehow. Um, and we have been a fairly good transition team this year. So it wasn't going to be like something we weren't capable of doing. It's just that that patch in the third quarter, and it extended in the last quarter, is as good a football I've seen any team play this year. Any team. Um, and I'm genuinely pretty hard on our on our group. But this was this was next level. Um, this was next level. It gives not not just the team, obviously, belief. Like, this is extraordinary amount of belief now. But it must give every supporter belief that this group, one, can come back and get back into games when things aren't going the way they want them to go and there's certain aspects of the game that need to be tweaked and improved. But the manner, the manner, you know, this was one of the games just on grit and determination. This was a, this was a very, very exciting brand of football which was near on impossible for the Giants to contain. So all that dominance in the clearances and then there's the transition game and, and the, the effort and intensity all just sort of gelled in together. It was like a it was like a perfect storm and to actually be there in that third quarter, I was actually caught up, and I'm a I'm a pretty much a silent barracker. Um, not a silent barracker, but I don't generally get too carried away. Um, but I did. I really, really loved everything about this performance and the way we played. And um, I think I think the thing I love is, and I know we get criticised sometimes. I'm not criticised that we are. You know, we've got some stars. We've got some stars. Um, and you need your stars. You need your stars to perform. Um, you do. And we're very lucky. We're very lucky um, that we have Patrick Cripp, Cripp. So I don't think I've seen a better game since he's been at the football club. I really don't. Uh, I'll get to, to individually shortly. But, you know, and even the combination of Pitnet and Tito Kane, there's, that was just extraordinary. Um, Pitnet started like a house on fire and, and had a really good game and Pit. And TDK showed that he can he can he can kick goals. He can be a dangerous threat forward to centre um, and give us a different look and a different dynamic. Um, and I I had queries on whether he's able to do that. And right here, right now, that that combination of Pitnet and TDK looks absolutely unstoppable. Um, but that will be questioned. There's no doubt that will be questioned um, at some time again. But right here, right now, it can it can work. Well, it worked in this game anyway. Um, so, yeah, and then, and then for, for Harry and Charlie to, to reap the benefits of our domination and have an impact on the scoreboard was just really pleasing. You know, I think Charlie 
left for like quite a few goals out there early. Um, got right on top of Buckley and then Lee Kalir, who just was so eye-catching on his performance against Harry early in the game. Harry had to get up the ground to, to take some contested marks, which kept him, which kept Lee Kalir honest. Um, but it was just a snowball effect um, in that um, in that third quarter and the clinical nature of the way we put the game to bed, I thought, um, even though it was close at three-quarter time. This is a different team now. Um, I think I think in uh, we've we've had in the past, and I'm talking, you know, over the last couple of years, we've had situations where we've dominated quarters and, and piled on goals and played unbelievable football, but almost like we put so much into that that we take the foot off the pedal, but we put them to bed early in that last quarter and, and put yeah, we uh, we put the nail in the coffin for the Giants and they just were unable to Unable to to get back into that game except for some junk goals late. Yeah, so I, I couldn't be more happier for the way we played that game. But there's always a but um, because, and I don't necessarily want to think about this right here, right now. But we have we have a, a game to be played on Saturday against the only undefeated team in the competition, and I don't think it gets any easier. Um, it doesn't get any easier. I know that they've got. Tom Stewart out, uh, but it looks like, you know, Weedering was on one leg. Uh, Zach Williams, there have to be concerns about him now with a, with a with a court calf. And I know both of those apparently have got the all clear, but, geez, they looked, they looked lame, particularly Weedering. He could hardly move in that last quarter. <laughs> I've never seen anyone in so much pain in all my life. But a terrific win, um, a terrific win. And uh, one in which I think I'll remember for, for a very long time. But does it, um, what does it mean moving forward? Who knows, who knows what it means right here, right now. It was really important to respond after the shock loss against Adelaide last week and keep us, keep us well and truly in touch for the top four and potentially top two, which we know for me is gonna be really important because that energy, let's not forget the energy that us, the supporters, were able to create for the players um, in that in that third quarter was was next level, um, and you could hear a pin drop every time the Giants would kick a goal, and that wouldn't necessarily be the case if you're playing in a away final or on someone else's home deck. So um, you've just got to you've just got to. Um, Put yourself in a position to be getting, getting home, home finals. Uh, it's as simple as that. Okay, the all important. Let's go through each player. Um, I'll try and keep this as brief as possible because I think when you win in such a manner, I, 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 and this is yeah. This wasn't this wasn't a um, a Fremantle Dockers win where it appeared we played pretty average football for the whole of the game until late. We hung in until late. This was, this was we played pretty well early. They got away from us a little bit because of the, the manner in which they were able to transition the ball, which put us under pressure ourselves. But the way we worked back into this game and then dominated, dominated, um, this is a fucking good win. This is a really, really good win and right up there. It's one of the best wins of the season across the board so far after round six. Lockie Cowan liked his game. I think um, second year player, I didn't feel Bedford and Daniels um, necessarily got away from us. They're good, they're good quality small forwards, but I think, you know, for the most part, Cowan, who I saw on green, um, at one time, I think we were rolling Zach Williams and, and Cowan um, through green early in the game before Boyd took over. I think 14 disposals, uh, 272 metres game. We saw a little bit of his flair at times. Um, yeah, I think it was a, a, a positive performance and we're probably going to need him. We're going to need him over the course of the next month or so. Um, he's got a fit, young body. Um, so it'd be... Really interesting to see how he goes against a, a top quality front half of Geelong 
this week at the MCG. I thought Ollie Hollands found some form. I really did. Maybe it was the goal that gave him a bit of confidence, a really important goal in that uh, in that second quarter where we got back-to-back -back goals to, to put us within 10 points at half-time after they'd got away. Um, thought he ran really well. Thought his de defensive pressures were good. I thought it was his best offensive game for the year. And I didn't necessarily think the Giants got a hell of a lot out of their wings. Um, it's probably the first time this year, really, that I felt that the opposition didn't necessarily dominate that part of the ground. So I think, hopefully, it's a step in the right direction for, for Ollie Hollands. I actually thought Zach Williams was struggling even before he, he went off the ground. Was it at halftime? He looked, he looked slow and he looked, he looked tired and he looked gassed. I'm talking he looked gas. I was watching him really closely. He looked gas, and it wasn't necessarily the fact that he got a, I think was it a cork calf. Um, he just looked gassed. Um, and I don't know whether I don't know whether he's right at the moment in terms of his body. It's been a maybe a, a big a big effort to get back in. Is he struggling a little bit physically at the moment? I felt like he was just a little bit off, a little bit off even when he was on. Super game in his 100th by Matt Kenny, and I mean a super game. To kick that, to kick that goal late, um, he just added a different dimension around the ground. I did say to my um, to my to one of my sons who was at the game with me, I did say to him that um, this was a guy that looked like he really wanted to show his former club um, that, you know, he made the right decision to come to Carlton. Um, and, yeah, he just played. He played the game in the right way and was just a really good player. I, 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 I'll I say to you, I don't think I've seen a better game by Patrick Cripps, and he's had some enormous games across his career. This guy is extraordinary. And, and, and it... I did that ranking every Carlton player on our list and I had Patrick Cripps at number one and that was before the start of the season. And a few people said, nah, 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 he is, he is. <laughs> oh, my God, this bloke is. And I looked at Tom Tom Green's numbers. He had a, he had big numbers, Tom Green, still, but this 13 clearances and he just, he bullied, he bullied a pretty bloody physical um, Giants midfield. Um, he bullied them. I, I've never seen him really do it at that level. It's, it was an incredible game. Incredible game. Everything he did was so clean and um, he was just destructive. Harry, as I mentioned, had a great battle with Leek Lear early in the game and had his problems. I mean, the, the, the spoiling ability of Leek Lear was, was um, yeah, he was, he was extra, like, I'll just, like, Wow, look at the fuck of this kid go. Um, and Harry had to get up the ground to get involved. And he's not playing that ruck at the moment either. But he he was he was super after half time and his tackling was good for a big man as well. TDK's kicked three goals. Um, he's had 16 hit outs. At, for right here, right now, that worked. That worked. Um, that that tandem of, of TDK and um and Pitnett was was exhausting for Briggs. Was exhausting, and the young kid Cabman's just not ready to fulfil that role at the moment. So it was a clear advantage for us. Acres was good again, just a solid contributor across the board. Fantasia, you know, it's a quiet game again. You know, he hasn't laid a tackle. He's had six disposals, one great bit of play, which showed what he's capable of doing. Where Charlie kicked that goal, um, and he was the one that set it up. He sort of broke around and got around inside forward 50 and he looked fast. Um, he looked fast and looked part of it, but, you know, six disposals, not big numbers. Carroll didn't do a lot when he came on. Um, he got involved a little bit, but, you know, he got another opportunity this week to, to you know, really stake his claims. But, you know, he's you're looking at him and thinking he's probably going to be pretty easily replaced once Cherry is right to go. I reckon Brody Kemp, um, I really rate Callum Brown. I don't think he's had a great year, Callum Brown, for the Giants. Um, other than the four or five goals he kicked against Collingwood in round one or, or, or round zero, whatever it was fucking called. Um, but Kemp, Kemp is going to make those. He's going to make those howlers and look a little bit wobbly at times. But that's the second week in a row that Kemp has has really put the 
has really put the clamps on on a on a, a big, uh, I suppose, danger player. You know, Fogarty last week and, and and Brown again. So well done, Sam Walsh. I mean, as my son, my eldest son, is in Alice Springs at the moment, and said to me, and I wrote it down. Um, he kept sending me text messages throughout the game, but he said. Fuck, Walsh is actually not human. <laughs> what more can you say um, about Sam Walsh? Uh, he's not human. He's not human. Uh, Corey Durden kicked two. Um, and I didn't mind his game. You know, a lot of courage to go back against the flight of the ball. And the way he pounced on that ball, and if he could kick that goal in the last quarter, that would have brought the stands down. That would have been three goals, three goals, two. And that's what we ask. And... Um, is he almost is he almost there, Corey Durden? Is he almost there? Are we asking too much of our small forwards? I think the question mark will still be around, and I think this week is a, probably a good time to really judge it because what we do know is Geelong have just got quality, quality small forwards, and not just for small forwards can hit the scoreboard, but can get up the ground and get involved offensively and defensively. But it was a step in the right direction. Elijah Hollins is just classy. Um, I think he's going to be a really good uh, a football for us. He was pretty clinical in kicking those two goals from set shots from 14 disposals. Weedering just laboured along, laboured along. Even early in that game, I was worried with our defence and the ease of which they were able to kick their goals. It was probably the biggest concern for me out of that game is us defensively. I don't feel, this is the big problem for us without um, without guys who are fit down there and, and, and Weary just looks a little bit off at the moment. Even even before he, he got the cork, he's just not, I don't know, he just, he's going for a Jacob Weary patch and he goes through those. Nick Newman was just bloody solid as a rock as usual. It's a big part of us getting back into that game. Really happy for Mark Pitnett, really. I, I mean, I'm, I'm one who criticises him, um, but he's had the 25 hit out, seven clearances, 17 disposals and taken three marks. Two of those contested. Such a huge game. Hewitt, very, very underrated season thus far with 31 touches. Just played his role to perfection. Uh, Kerno, with, with Harry, um, those other players help keepers in it. And what I mean by that is those smaller type forwards and midfielders in regards to the scoreboard kept clicking it over it, but it wasn't until Charlie and Harry really took over that probably felt confident that we could win that game. And for him to step up on, on a quality opponent in Jack Buckley was, was really important for us. Probably should have kicked six, not uh, three goals, four. Lewis Young... Um, it is what it is at the moment. It is what it is at the moment. I'm not confident in anything he really does, although, um, yeah, we're just going to have to go with it. We really are. Boyd was huge when he went on to, to Tom Green and we saw a bloke that just kept kept to the task, almost to the point where Tom Green, uh, sorry, Tom Green, Toby Green, who the fuck am I going with this? Toby Green got frustrated um, he's just a very, very courageous footballer, Jordan Boyd. So we couldn't get him involved defensively, but we needed him to, to play that role on a super, super dangerous player. And the thing is, Toby Green hasn't had a good year thus far. He's been, he's been pretty quiet, but that had the potential. That game had the potential for, for uh, you know, when, when the Giants looked like they were getting away a little bit, that had... The, as I mentioned, the potential for, for Toby Green to really cash in, um, and he didn't. So well done to Jordan Boyd. Oh, he's really, really quiet other than the goal early, but then got involved late in the game with some getting up and taking some marks on the lead, which I felt was important when blokes looked really tired. Didn't we look gassed? Didn't we look gassed in that game? That worries me coming into the game against Geelong. We look fucking super tired. Oh, we look super tired, which is, ugh, that scares the shit out of me. But, yeah, we need more from Matty Owies, but there were those moments which late in the game were important. And I think Matthew Cottrell just, once again, shows some class. You know, he shows some class. This is a rookie. This is a rookie. There was a patch of play there on the wing where he just feigned and just was so calm under pressure. He just when, he, when we had the ball in Matthew Cottrell's hands, things Happen. He doesn't have, have it a hell of a lot, but things happen. All in all, guys, a great, great win 
for our football club and I just can't really, other than the fact that, yeah, defensively, um, we weren't quite on early in that game, although we were winning clearances. That's the only negative out of this game. Everything else was absolutely top-notch.